Hi everyone, thanks for coming to my talk. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, IS short name disclosure. So this is not something new, but I have added a few things to it and I just wanted to talk about it. And hopefully at some point I will say it's dead, but we will see. So uh, my name is Sarush. Uh, at the moment I'm a freelancer doing contracting, bug bounty and stuff. And uh, I mainly do web app testing, so uh, I'm a web application expert, basically, not security expert. I'm not a developer. I used to be a, an ASP Classic developer and uh, uh, early 2000, and that is why I like IIS, because I used to work with IIS, and it was so vulnerable and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that vulnerable anymore since IIS 6, but... It's, uh, so still, uh, is something. So today, uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, what the short file name is in Windows, what are the long file names, or I should say real file names. And then I will also show you how this can be done automatically and also how you can do this manually. I mostly use the manual technique myself, uh, before I run any automation. Uh, but then again, uh, you can just use the, uh, automation. And then in the end also I will uh, show the methods that you can get from a short file name to uh, the actual file name, real file name. So uh, short file names basically uh, are what we had back in uh, DOS or FAT file system. We're not talking about FAT16 or FAT32, this is just that. And so files there had a limit. So you could only have uh, eight characters in the name. And if there was an extension, you had a dot, and then uh, you could only have three characters uh, after that as the extension. So in total, the file names were 12 characters, 8 plus 1 plus 3. And so um, there were some other limitations there. Uh, first of all, they were all in uppercase, so all these characters had to be uppercase in DOS. And uh, I was a user of DOS uh, back in the day. I didn't know that that's actually a feature. I, I wasn't aware of it. But uh, I realized that later that everything is uppercase. And so also file names uh, could not have uh, some characters in them. You could basically only have alphanumeric and a special, uh, sorry, uh, you can only have alphanumeric with only some special characters, not all the special characters. There is no spaces in them and you cannot have more than one period. So, uh, from Windows 95, uh, they introduced VFAT and they extended FAT file system. So, it could support long file names by some hacky things. Uh, and then from, uh, uh, by basically introducing NTFS, then the long file names basically were fully supported. And uh, you didn't actually need to have short file names, but they did not remove it and it still works and it's still there and you have to disable it yourself. So to just show you what they are, so these are the, the long file names or I should say real file names here. If you want to see what the short file name looks like, they are here. So this one, as you can see, it just keeps the, the first six characters till the one dot txt. And uh, with this one, because it has a dot here, it removes it and the file looks like this. With this one, the extension is more than three characters. So it has a short name equivalent. But these two are okay because they are like eight, eight or less than eight characters in the name and only three characters in the extension. And today we are not going to basically find these kind of files. And web.config is a very famous example when you are uh, finding these kind of uh, files. You normally get this one as well. Just added it there. <laughs> so basically, um, with the short file names, you have six characters, they start with six characters. Normally, this is the, the first six characters of uh, the file name itself. And then you have the, the still the character, and then you have one digit here. And if it has an extension, then you have a dot, and then three first characters of the extension. When, it, uh, when Windows creates these short file names and assign them to the file, uh, it uh, removes uh, the characters that are not allowed. Uh, and also it changes some other characters. For example, plus will be changed to uh, underscore. Uh, and also, if, if, if like there is a short file name for a file, 
if Windows is going to create another short file name for another similar file, uh, it will increase this number here because uh, the other file already had that name assigned to it. So the name is six, that's why it's set it here. And if you want to see it yourself in your Windows, you just basically run one of these commands in uh, CMD and you get the, the short file names, unless you have disabled short file names on your uh, machine. And uh, if you think about it, because we only have six first characters and then till the character and a the number, then uh, if you have, for example, more than 10 files that starts with the same six characters, then uh, we have a limit and you cannot have basically uh, more short names. However, uh, what they did in since Windows 2000, they said this uh, digit here, uh, the maximum can be four. So only you can only have, it starts from one and it goes to four. And so you can only have four similar files uh, that starts with the same six, with the, with the same six characters. Uh, and if you have more than four files, and uh, then the pattern is that if you use uh, the first two characters of the file, and if those two characters, uh, like if the file name, for example, starts with dot or a space or something that is not valid, it doesn't even use any of those. And then we have a hex, uh, basically, value here, which is CRC of the file using uh, an algorithm. And then we have dot and then uh, three characters of the extension. So this algorithm for creating this hex has been explored by Thomas Galvin in the past. Uh, if you want to basically read about it, you can go there. There is like C code and everything that he has done. And if you want to read more about like what is happening with 8.3, Wikipedia has a lot of things in it. And so uh, let's have like some early questions uh, and answers because uh, I often, uh, like people often ask me these questions. So if you have test tilde one uh, uh like, Okay, if you don't have it, and uh, can we have test till the two dot ASP? Yes, we can. If this one exists previously and now you have deleted that file, Windows doesn't basically rename this to test till the one. It uh, keeps the name. So that can happen. And if uh, can the short file name starts with dot? Uh, no, it uh, basically removes it. If a file basically has a dot like for example dot git or something like that then it will be git tilde one and uh, the other thing is the tilde character itself is a special character that is allowed so a short name can actually have more than one tilde character in its name this file here for example is completely valid from 8.3 it's not a short name it looks like a short name file but it's not and so windows doesn't assign it uh, a short name uh, on the other hand, because the extension is more than four characters here, so Windows is going to shorten it, and it will look like this, which is really weird, but this is what will happen. So, uh, if you secure your Windows, and let's say you have disabled short file names, so can you still get to those old short names that uh, was created previously? Yes, it doesn't remove them. If you want to actually, if you want them to be removed, you have to recreate those files. And uh, which windows disable short file names by default? None of them. It's always it's enabled and you have to disable it yourself. Uh, the re Microsoft recommendation is that. So I've, I found this issue back in 2010. Probably they exist like since they created IS. Uh, in August, it's going to be a 13 year old bug and uh, it's the birthday. Microsoft hasn't patched it because they said it's not a vulnerability. Uh, it's a bug, but it's not a vulnerability, and uh, we are not going to address it. So originally, when I reported it to Microsoft, there was a denial of service as well uh, attached to this. They have addressed it. It's much better now, but uh, the short name disclosures is still there. So let's talk about the denial of service side, uh, like uh, why we had a denial of service and it's not there anymore. So originally, uh, there is like this parameter, max URL segments. URL segments are basically anything between slashes. So you have this slash tilde one, for example, here. This is one segment, and this is another segment, and the last bit is another segment. So originally, uh, this max URL segments back in 2010, when I found this, was set to 200. And now it's limited to 32, which is quite better. 
And uh, back in 2010, if I had sent a request like this to an IIS, it would have sent like more than 3 million calls uh, to the file system per each request. So I could send basically 100 requests to an IIS and CPU usage was on 100% and file system was uh, completely busy and yes, it was a temporary denial of service back then. Uh, Microsoft didn't address it immediately and they said uh, it's not it's not ideal to set this max URL segment to a high number, uh, but then later on they changed it, they changed it themselves. So it's not much better. So if you send something like that, and I have I uh, put 29 here because we have one segment plus 29, 30, 31, and 32 segments. Uh, now if you send something like this, it only sends 353 uh, file system calls to the file system. Uh, obviously if you didn't have tilde and instead of tilde character here, if you had something like a normal character like X, uh, then the calls would have been 136. So. Even now, using the short names, uh, it sends more calls to the file system because it does something and it wants to perform some tasks. And uh, it's much better. It's not causing any denial of service anymore. But uh, I think maybe if someone increased this max URL segments to 200 again, that will happen again. Um, I haven't done it, but uh, yeah, it was like that originally. So is this a bug or feature? Because Microsoft originally said, we don't care about this. But the problem is, it can be abused and has no use. So from my point of view, it's a bug, definitely a bug. Because uh, if, you, if, you, if it is only good to be abused, so it's not a feature. And uh, the, also, uh, people are arguing like, this is informational, it has no value and things like that. I agree, actually, because uh, it's even worse than a uh, directory listing. Like when you go to uh, a directory and you get a list of all the files, uh, it's much better than just having the short file names because when you have the short file names, it's just the beginning. Now you have to find the full, uh, like the whole file names. So is it useful at all? Uh, yes, like since 2010 that I found this issue, I got access to so many databases, so many archive files, uh, so many files that had to be hidden, uh, but I got access to them. I mean, I got access to something uh, that was hidden, but wasn't secure. So basically it's very good. And because, uh, and if you're pen testing, you, you need to do this quickly, and plan is not giving you the list of files in that folder, uh, or if you're doing bug bounty, this is a very good way to basically get some results very fast. So, which OIS servers are affected? All of them. So, <laughs> that's, I just listed them because I could. I could have just said one sentence, all of them. But no, I wanted to list them. So basically, yeah, I think all of them are affected because it has, uh, it is basically a fundamental thing. OIS is just uh, a vehicle here for us to do this. So, what is this attack based off? Like, uh, how come we can disclose this short file name? Like, how can we actually do this? So this attack is using some different vectors. One of them is the DOS wildcard character. So in DOS, uh, asterisk uh, is used to say, for example, uh, anything after this. So uh, so if, for example, we have te star dot a dot star, it can be te dot a, or it can be test dot xvx, or it can be this one. So, and also the question mark matches one character. So we are going to use this so uh, to complete the file basically and to guess the next character of the file. And it only works when we are trying this uh, on short names, not long names on IS. And the other vector that we are relying on here is this tilde. Uh, so as soon as IS sees tilde one, oh, when I say IS, uh, it's not actually IS itself, it's like HTTP sys and then it's going to be some DLLs there. Um, as soon as they see this tilde and a digit after, the behavior changes. So that is how uh, this attack works. As soon as they see this, then this, it cares about the wildcard. And then we also want to end the URL with uh, a suffix. We use this suffix because uh, this attack on its own may not work, but when it hits those DLLs that are in charge of .NET Framework, then you get a different response. 
And HTTP methods are also important because uh, after we report this, uh, after I reported this vulnerability to Microsoft after a few years, they started saying, okay, they added so so other so many characters to this uh, block list of characters that you cannot have in the URL. So now, if you send, for example, asterisk or question mark as like person three f uh, URL encoded uh, using a GET request, you get an error from IIS that this is a dangerous character; it shouldn't be in the URL. But if you use options or debug, it's okay. <laughs> this is how the enumeration work actually. So um, this is based on IIS ten, the latest version. I even tried it on the Windows Server. 2022 preview or something like that. It doesn't really matter. It just works. And so, um, one thing that I should mention here is today when you see 404, it means the file exists. And when you see 200, it means that it does not exist. So that's, that's one thing to remember. So, <laughs> so basically if I send this request with the options method, so this is the HTTP header, options head, uh, options method. And this is the path, and then something that I know shouldn't be there, and I just put asterisk there, and then tilde one. This is very similar uh, to the pattern that I'm going to enumerate uh, later. And then this is the suffix here. If I send this, I know this one does not exist. So the server respond with this 200 and some bunch of headers. I'm like, okay, that's good. So you you're not there. And if I send this asterisk tilde one star and the response of the server changed to 404, then that means a short name exists in that folder. Basically, this is, uh, this is the, the whole thing. This is how IS is disclosing the short names. Change of the response from 200 and 404 to 404, or some additional headers, or something uh, changes in the response. And so when that happens, then after that, I can uh, it, it put uh, one character here and go from A to Z. And uh, for example, when I send letter T, it gives me 404. That, that there is no short file name that starts with letter T. And when I use U, uh, then it gives me 200. So I have the, actually, I meant to say 404. It means it exists. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, I had, so the, the file that I had there, um, <laughs> it starts with letter T, and uh, obviously it's a test file. So yes, it starts with letter T. I, but if I use like letter U, I get a 200, that means it does not exist. So I can enumerate it like that, and then in the end, I will find out like uh, this short file name. And uh, by sending this, then I get a 404, and I know that I have six. Uh, characters here, tilde one, and uh, three characters here. That's a complete short file name, so I'm done. I got one file out of it. So, it sounds easy, so it can be automated. It has been automated, so uh, first I'm going to advertise my own tool. Uh, I created it back in the day uh, when I didn't know how to actually code in Java. I still don't know how to code in Java. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> I created it and then I had to change it because it didn't work. People were complaining in GitHub like, why do I need to install Java 7 for this? Java is on version 16 now. I was like, because, uh, because I say so, because uh, I don't know how to <laughs> Basically, ChatGPT helped. So I upgraded it. <laughs> I upgraded it to, uh, the, to the latest version of Java. So it now works with the latest version of Java, which is good. Um, it's a still a spaghetti, so if, uh, I don't recommend using it if there is any alternative. But uh, the alternatives so far have been buggy. There, uh, there is this tool here uh, by uh, SweetLight. You can use that. Unfortunately, this tool is not ready yet. Uh, and uh, then we have this web extension that you can use as well. I'm just hearing some news that uh, something is happening, guys. So, hang on. A breaking news. I just come in. So the tool has become available. The, uh, the guy responsible is sitting over there. Over here. You can stand up. He doesn't, okay. he doesn't want to basically talk to us. Uh, so we, we just uh, call him Bitguard for now. I mean, this is his handle in Twitter. You can follow him. So this tool has just been released. Uh, this was the tool that was used uh, by some bounty hunters and they're advertising it. And then you wanted to download it, you would realize that it's private and you cannot actually get into it. And they were all like, ooh, we have found so many vulnerabilities. And I was like, give it to me. I found this vulnerability. 
No. And so, actually, he gave it to me as well. But, <laughs> but that tool is a different tool because he has uh, just put a lot of efforts into the latest version and just released it today. And thank you very much for that. And so I'm looking forward to use it. The good thing about this tool is uh, after it finds the short file names, it tries to find the full file name using rainbow tables and uh, mumbo jumbo. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I should really go and see the code. I don't know what it was. <laughs> so magic. But yeah. So uh, and also the the other thing that I've heard that it does is like uh, you remember that the, some files have hex in them, like CRC. Uh, we never had a tool that could basically match this CRC to an actual name. So apparently this tool should do that. So when uh, you do some sort of short name scanning, probably it's better for you to use this tool and not my tool. But <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> I'll have to try it. <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, so if you're using my tool, just as the last advert, so <laughs> remember that there is a config file there and you have to pass this to the, the application if you want to configure it. Uh, like if you need to send some cookies, if you need to send some headers, if it, if you need to change the request in a way, if you need to in the user agent you have to say I don't know I am the hacker from Hacker One or something. You can you can do all those sort of things in in that uh, config file, uh, but nobody uses it, so I have to advertise it because then that's why they don't get any results because it needs to be configured. Otherwise, uh, it ju it is just uh, normal and it may not work. Anyway, enough of that. This is how you can actually find this issue manually. This is how I do it myself uh, when I want to uh, test for this issue. So as soon as I realize that I'm dealing with uh, an app, uh, like an, a .NET application on iOS and I see like ASVX, I'm like, okay, I have .NET framework here. So this is not .NET Core, I'm happy. Uh, so let's go and see if I can find some files. Even if it is .NET Core, if it is running under iOS, it might still have some .NET framework lying around. So uh, it's always good to, to see it quickly. So the first thing I do these days, I use the options header, the options HTTP header, and I use I normally use this suffix uh, as the first thing. This dot rem that you see here is for .NET Remote Game. Normally is allowed. So uh, and people uh, like in WAFs and things like that. Uh, they may block it, but it's, it's normally a lot. But if they block it, just use dot so. And if they block that, it's easy, it's easy. There are a lot of others. But anyway, I use, I start with options and this suffix, and, uh, then, uh, I send a HTTP request to the server with the, like, asterisk tilde one dot star, and then that suffix, I mean, I'll put a slash here. It's okay. You can remove it if you want. If I get 404, that, and then, uh, that means, from my point of view, that this short name actually is there. Uh, and then if I send something that I know shouldn't be there, it's even longer than six characters, so hopefully shouldn't be there. Uh, then I get uh, 200. That means I have a different response. So that means it is vulnerable. Uh, it's very manual, like you have to, you have to create a lot of tabs, probably very sweet to just do that. Some people like tabs, so I will show you one of those examples of those people who like tabs. But you can also um, use Intruder. So in Intruder, you can set the attack type to cluster bomb, and then you define three uh, basically inputs here. And for, for the HTTP method, you just change it from, for example, options, post and debug, get and patch and things like that. And for the path, uh, you, you basically put something like star and I like don't exist or something like that. And for the suffix, as I said before, you can use something like that. As you can see, when I'm sending this to the server, there are different responses. I've colorized them so they, they are related to each other. So 404, 200, 404, 403. As you can see, when I'm using debug, it's not 404 and 200, it's 404 and 403. Uh, what matters here is the change in the response, not what you get in the response. And if you like tabs, like me, you can basically do this. Like, this is a normal web suite in my uh, computer. When I'm, like, I'm not apprenticed anymore, so in bug bounty, I just don't care. I just close web suite, I open another one, and just delete everything. I don't need to answer to anyone. So it's, it's very good. But still, no, I'm still in love with tabs. So I create the same amount of tabs normally after two days of test. 
But yeah, so um, if you like tabs, yes, you can test in them. You can basically rename them. It will take a long time. Then you can take a photo of it and uh, stick it to your wall. It's hard. So yeah, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> you like art. So, <laughs> so another thing here is sometimes when you're going to do this test, you will realize that uh, it says it's not vulnerable. But you have this gut feeling that you must be vulnerable, right? Because the, the, it doesn't, it, it just doesn't feel right. Because the technology is old, should be vulnerable. You don't think they have done anything. So, might be some bath there, might be some anomalies. So, if you want to basically verify to see whether, uh, they have disabled short names or not, this is the way. This is how I do. So, if you know a file exists actually on the server, uh, you can use that file there. So, for example, if you know default.aspx exists, you can use default.aspx instead of web.config. But I knew that web.config, for example, uh, should be there, or I guess that it should be there. And so I use this and I don't exist. As you can see, I do not have any wildcard characters here. This method works on the full file name as well. The only reason we don't put the full file names there is because we can't use wildcard, so we cannot use it for enumeration. But it is a still good, uh, it is a still good to verify whether a file actually exists physically on the file system or not. Uh, so you get a 404, that means it exists. I, I like that because after this, I'm like, 404, it exists. But no. But anyway, this is, this is how it works. And so, uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, another, another thing here. So if you use the short name after that, so you verify that actually, yes, the response changes when I'm using the full file names. So let's verify to see if it creates short names for those files that should have uh, a short name assigned to them. So I knew that this method works uh, and nothing is blocking this. And now I use web config without any asterisk, as you can see here, the shortened version of it. And if I get 404 again, uh, that means, yes, the server hasn't disabled it. And uh, that means it should be there. You can change it a little bit, use uh, post instead of options. Uh, recently in a uh, bug bounty program, it uh, uh, was on uh, HackerOne, uh, I faced something, as uh, like something, it was Akamai. So Akamai was blocking my uh, scanner and everything, and I didn't realize why, but then uh, I realized that they just blocked options. They, they had blocked anything other than get or post. I changed options to post, and it worked. And the good thing for me was developers had disabled that options that Microsoft uh, had put in place to disable star in the URL. So I managed to basically, again, do you know, enumeration just uh, through Akamai, uh, thanks to the developers. But then again, uh, don't be uh, scared if you get, uh, like, it's not vulnerable, maybe test it many years. So tips and tricks, so uh, <laughs> it can be useful sometimes when you're doing this. So do not rely only on the uh, status code. Maybe the status code is always 200. Check the response uh, to have like, if it has an additional header that has happened to me before, there was like slight changes in a header and that meant that yes, it's vulnerable or there was something different in the response. Uh, one of them had like an additional space character or something like that and uh, I don't know why and I enumerated like that. Uh, also, um, do not confuse Kestrel or HTTPCs with IIS. Uh, these are the coolest stuff, <laughs> but they are not IIS. They are not vulnerable uh, to, uh, to this directly uh, because they don't, base, uh, they don't get the physical file from the file system uh, like IIS does. Uh, and web forms using .NET Framework can be served without any extensions. So sometimes when you try this, you may not need a dot and then the extension. And you may think that you have found a folder, but it's actually a file uh, because it, uh, it's being served without any extension. You're getting an OK. So always go for the extensions and try to enumerate them as well. And this method uh, won't find you any virtual files or applications. So in IIS, you can have application, you can have directories, you can have virtual directories, and you can have applications. Uh, it won't find you anything that is not 
on the file system. So uh, if it's virtual or if it's an application path, it won't find it. And sometimes when uh, asterisk and question mark or uh, <laughs> I don't know, what, okay, I will talk about this. Uh, when the question mark and the uh, asterisk are blocked, you can use the angle brackets. Uh, they are automatically converted to asterisk and uh, question mark when it queries the file system. Don't ask me why. It's Windows and it likes to do that. I really like it. That's a good feature. And also the double quote can be dot character. It's not really useful because the double quote itself is normally blocked, but uh, it's cool to know that it works and uh, if you know, for example, something is blocked there, like by WAF, for example, if whenever it sees uh, admin tilde something dot ASP blocks something, then you can just replace that dot with a uh, double quote. Remember to URL encode these, otherwise they will be blocked. Um, and also, uh, you can have a space and period characters after the file name. It will be ignored. Uh, it just acts as, uh, like, you think that they are padding because, because of that. Which is good. And this is the difference between uh, applications and virtual directories there. So uh, this is uh, a screenshot from IIS. So this is an application. Uh, this is a directory that physically is there. And this is a virtual directory with this uh, arrow thingy here. So if you want to find out if it is an application or it is a virtual directory or it is a directory, I found this method. Uh, this bit this morning when I was creating this slide. So, uh, I don't know. I think it works because I just tried it at uh, half past eight this morning and it worked. <laughs> and I added it there. I was like, <laughs> let's just put it there. Uh, because I can. So, uh, if you put this uh, suffix after your path, like we want to see if path one is uh, an application or a directory, then you add this to the path. If you get 200, that means it's an application. If you get 500, it's a directory or a virtual directory. So now at least you know you have a virtual directory or a directory. Now you want to see if it is virtual or it is an actual directory. Then you can use, uh, again, the method that we use for enumeration. This time our suffix would be colon colon uh, dollar data, which is an alternate data stream following by, uh, by our normal magic pattern. And the example is this. If it gives us 404, that means it's a physical directory. It's actually there. It's one of these. It's like the other three. But if it gives us a 200, that means uh, it's a virtual directory, like this one, V virtual directory here. It might be useful when you're doing this kind of attack or just attacking OS applications in general. Here is an example. Uh, I have used my own tool because obviously uh, BitQuark tool wasn't available until uh, one o'clock <laughs> today, and I didn't have time to run it. So um, that's why uh, this screenshot is like this, and I got this screenshot a screenshot from the past. So uh, this is just Java jar file here, and I'm running uh, 20 threads. If you go higher than 20, you may get some, I mean, I say 20. If you go higher than 10, sometimes you get, you can have a lot of false positives and things like that. So you have to be careful about not running it with a lot of threads. Also, you can be easily blocked by, uh, Akamai, Cloudflare and others, uh, that things. Um, yeah, my home IP address was blocked for one day at least. Um, my wife wasn't happy about it. It was like, Lloyd's Bank is, I can't open Lloyd's Bank. And I was like, <laughs> What's happening? I checked and my IP address in Akamai was uh, tagged as a web attacker. Yes, I am. I'm proud of it. But, <laughs> so I had to turn off the, the, the router several times, wait for 10 minutes or so and uh, to get a new IP address. Gradually, I got a new IP address so I could see stuff, Tesco website and others. <laughs> and uh, the last thing I pass is the config file. So if you don't pass it, it doesn't, it does use the normal config file that it has uh, originally. Actually, it actually doesn't use that. It uses the default values. Uh, you have to pass it through. And when you run this command, uh, it basically gives you the short file names. It doesn't, try to find the full uh, full names or real names, you have to do it yourself. 
Only, it only tells you an actual file name if it is less than six characters. It's like, hmm, I found this. Like, yeah, I could have guessed. But yeah, uh, use a uh, bit course tool for that. I don't know. We should work. <laughs> <laughs> so this is um, another example here is, uh, so on in OAS, you cannot look into certain folders like bin directory. Bin directory has been added to this uh, uh, the fil filtered list, uh, a list of the directories that should not be accessible to users remotely because it normally contains DLLs and some uh, other data that should not be accessible. Back in the day, even had uh, like access databases and things to like that. Um, and so uh, you can <laughs> still use alternate data streams and short name scanners to look into those directories. So. As you can see here, uh, I'm basically using my own tool again, and uh, this time, instead of saying slash bin slash, I'm using slash bin colon colon uh, dollar index underscore allocation. So index alloc dollar index allocation means a directory in Windows, and uh, the same as uh, colon dollar i30 colon dollar index allocation. The reason I know that is because OS was also vulnerable at the time at some point to um, an authentication bypass using this. So at some point you could basically get those files. Not, not, you cannot access those files, but you can still enumerate the files that are in the bin directory. Why is that useful? Just because uh, you can probably guess what kind of libraries are there, like Telerik or things like that, uh, and uh, to see what kind of information you can get out or just uh, guessing the frameworks and things that have been used. It's not that useful in terms of downloading anything. If there is even uh, a, a, an ASPX file in that uh, bin directory, you cannot load it unless you know the zero day that I know about. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be patched in August. Uh, and I found it when I was trying to bypass a VAF uh, to <laughs> so my OS short term scanner will work again. Uh, and I can't talk about it because uh, obviously it's a zero day, but uh, apparently I added something to the URL, I can give you that. I added something to the URL and I managed to access the files in the bin directory and meanwhile I also bypassed uh, the, the whole app pool security model there and as well as the authentication, uh, OIS authentication on folders. I don't know why everything happened at once, but I was just trying to bypass a VAF. <laughs> <laughs> it was unintended. At least I got 10k out of it, so... <laughs> so um, and also, uh, for alternate data streams, for files, you can use colon colon dollar data. It's very old uh, and very good. Uh, I, I remember around like 99 or 2000, something like that, you could even get the source code of ASP Classic files using this on iOS. Uh, but now you can use it to for the enumeration and also the same with colon colon dollar bitmap. It normally should give you an error if the file actually is there. So that's it. So from the short file name to the real file name. So this is where it becomes actually important because so far we just got the short file names and we don't, we like, they are not important because if you put the short file name in the URL, it's not going to serve any file. You have to find the full file name. Um, so people have approached it differently. Uh, obviously now we have uh, this new shiny tool today. I have to try to see how it works, which methods it is covering. But uh, I personally, myself, um, when I was doing pen testing, uh, I had a big list in my sitemap. So I was searching the keyword in my sitemap to see, for example, if developers have used this in a CSS or in a JavaScript or somewhere in the sitemap that it can uh, basically give me some clue about the actual file name. Uh, the other method that I used to use was Google dorking and uh, going into the GitHub of those developers and uh, searching there and things like that. Uh, also, the, the other methods that people are using uh, is a dictionary. So they have a big dictionary. They just uh, try to find anything that can match the first six characters and then complete it. The problem here is the file can have more than one board. It can be two words, three words. It can even have underscore in the middle or more dots in the middle. So it's not easy to guess them. Um, but uh, AI came, so I was like, ooh, ChatGPT can actually help me with this. It can help, actually. I, I will show you how it can help. Uh, but I think in the future, uh, when things go further, 
we should be able to even uh, use AI more to just find the files because let's face it, Microsoft is not going to patch this. And uh, as long as we have OS around, this vulnerability should be there. And tools, uh, these are the three tools. I've added this tool here because it was released today. And uh, there is also another tool, uh, a very manual and like a bash file to, to, to run uh, different things on uh, IIS. Normally people in Bug Bounty uh, are doing this uh, because it's command line based and stuff. And this one is a Verb Suite extension. Uh, I talked to this guy and uh, he liked uh, my idea of using sitemap. I don't know if he added it in there or not, but he said he's doing something to find the file names there. Um, and uh, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to try it soon. Um, so this is the prompt that I sent to ChatGPT to, to get the file names out. Check the time. Okay, is it? So I asked ChatGPT, uh, like I created this prompt. I thought I'm very smart at giving it a big prompt. Uh, the bigger your prompt is, the, the, the basically, uh, the wronger the answer is. Like, just, just try to give it like a very short prompt, very concise prompt and things like that. Don't go for a long one uh, like this. It doesn't listen to you, like it ignores some of these things and it's like, ooh, I'm just going to li the, read this. It's like my boss when he used, used to like read my emails, like the first paragraph, I'm going to answer this paragraph. <laughs> Could you please answer this? Oh, I will answer the first one of those questions as well. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that happens. So, uh, now that I'm my own boss, I can do it to myself. So, that's okay. Uh, and so I asked this question from ChatGPT and I gave ChatGPT this file. I said, okay, I have this file up, uh, tildebond.ash. Uh, could you please tell me what it is? And so I tried that twice, one without internet and one with the internet. So go, go and try to see what's out there and find that. The result didn't change that much, but the good thing was even the first list had uh, the file that I had. The only problem was, as you can see here, sometimes it was just putting HTX there. I was like, it's supposed to be smart. <laughs> it's like, what is this? Like, I, I even, uh, I even told ChatGPT, like, please, can you make sure it starts with ASH? And then it, it came up with some, uh, stupid thing in the file. <laughs> I was like, no, you were right there. Just, just change this. And I realized that, uh, you can, you, basically, whatever you get from ChatGPT has to be analyzed. You can't just, try them on the on the server. You have to change the extension and uh, make sure that it matches this yourself. But the good thing was that file was there. But then I had another file and uh, it, it looked like this, gen air till one that is. First, when, when it was without internet, it was like, okay, general error. That was a good answer, but basically uh, none of these two lists had my uh, answer in them. And uh, Unfortunately, it can only go as high as like 50. So every time it gives you 50, and normally if you go more than 20, it just changes the extension or repeat the same name with another extension. And it doesn't care that you have said ASP, uh, it, would, it will just uh, change the extension to something else. And in here, as you can see, it doesn't even care that it should start with Gen Air. It have put General somewhere. Where is it? Uh, General. Oh yeah, the first one actually. <laughs> so general error. I'm like, okay, it should start with gen error and then something do not complete general, uh, the gen actually. And then it didn't listen. Just, okay. It didn't work out in that. But I guess if you, if, uh, if chat GPT is connected to some sort of plugins that can pull out data from, uh, GitHub, and other repositories, if it will become better, we will see. So this is uh, what I found after the whole thing. So this is 2023 stuff. So uh, back in MDSEC, when I was talking to people about this, uh, one of my colleagues asked me a question, like what would happen if I have a file that actually has a tilde in it and it's long? Um, is Windows going to do anything about it? And I was like, yes, you, you are going to get a short name. But it actually made me thinking about uh, what does OIS do about this? Like, can I enumerate the, the whole name or just the short name? And I realized that if you have a file name that anywhere in the file you have tilde and a number uh, from zero to nine, it can be even zero, just needs to see this pattern, tilde and a number. 
anywhere in the file, then you can enum enumerate the whole file name, the full uh, file name. The method is exactly the same, but you don't stop after the sixth character that you think the short file name should finish. Just continue, you enumerate the whole thing. And as long as it sees this in the, in the path, then you're okay. It just doesn't care. Um, and uh, the, yeah, there is a bad thing about it. If you, obviously the, this is the limitation of short name. If you have plus or any higher ASCII characters than 7F, uh, it's basically, you cannot enumerate that easily. You have to put a wild card there. And then you have to guess uh, what that character was later on yourself. So this is an example of like how you can actually see if a folder has a file that is longer than uh, eight characters with a tilde in it. Instead of putting six question marks here, I put seven question mark here. So in a, in a normal situation, this should always give me 200 as the file should not exist because seven question marks um, shouldn't be there. We should only have six characters before tilde in a normal shortness. But if there is an actual long file name with tilde and a number after, you will get a 404. So you have to start with uh, seven question marks and uh, start tilde, and this number should be enum enumerated from zero to nine. If you get a 404 or a change in response, I should say, then you have a hit. You have a long file name with tilde in it, and then you can go and enumerate that file and find it. Why can that be useful? So um, in some situation when uh, you can control the file name, for example, the system, is, the system is going to generate a report for you and put it in the log folder somewhere um, and it uses your username and you have changed your username to tilde one and then something random or whatever you wanted. Uh, and it, it is using that in the middle of the file and you can't guess the rest of the file. It can be useful to basically get the full file name. And the more important thing there is like, uh, sometimes there are some sensitive data in that. It's very rare to happen, but I can see the potential. And I still don't know why basically this long file name should be enumerated just because it has this in it. Why well, it works, so uh, that's a good thing. Um, and so uh, in the, what's the defense mechanism uh, on this? Like how can you stop this attack? Microsoft recommends us to uh, disable short file name scanner creation on uh, Windows. You have to do it as soon as you create a box, not after you have created your web application. If you have created uh, your web folder and you have already uh, have your website there, if you uh, disable short file names, you have to move that folder somewhere else that has short file names disabled and then copy them back. So it, it counts as recreation. So when it recreates the files, it doesn't create the short file names for them. And hopefully it doesn't copy the short, copy the, the short names when you're copying it there because short names are not disabled. But in the end of the day, this is just security by obscurity. So, uh, even if you disable the short names, uh, if you have a sensitive file on your server or if your log file uh, is in a, uh, like your logs are in a zip uh, file and they can be downloaded by someone knowing the name, uh, it's not really a short name vulnerability. It's, it's basically uh, the fact that that file is accessible is the vulnerability. So security by obscurity is not a solution. So the, the solution is to make the web application secure, to make sure uh, all the files that are accessible to users have appropriate access control checks and uh, they cannot be downloaded by unauthorized users and that's it. But we know that this is not really happening in most of the applications, but that's the solution. So that's it. Thank you very much for coming here and uh, I can answer any questions if you have any questions. Oh, thank you very much.